All right. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, after hearing the first talk, I truly appreciate the diversity of this type of a forum, uh, forum here. And perhaps it's the outliers in here. I'm an engineer. <laughs> so uh, what you're really um, going to talk, uh, what you're really going to see is basically we're using a mathematical model to understand the risk of COVID-19 transmission through the aerosol generated by toilet flashing. So this is out of the human rim, but we're looking at the toilet. There's a reason for this type of a research. Maybe early in the COVID-19 pandemic, you may hear some of the news and those newspaper articles will, sh will show why should you flash uh, your toilet with the lid down? And even in the science magazine showing, can you catch COVID-19 through neighbor's toilet? So there's a lot of uh, uh, public concern or public panic regarding the transmissions through the aerosols uh, generated by toilet flashing. And uh, early on in the first SARS outbreak in Hong Kong, there is a very specific case in the multi-unit apartment building. They are considering the transmission of the first SARS is through the, the faulty vent uh, from the upstairs uh, condo that has um, a COVID patient. Well, not COVID at the time is a SARS patient. When the second uh, this uh, uh, COVID nineteen hit, there's a lot of um, concerns um, about spreading by the toilet generated aerosols. This concern is actually not um, out of the blue because we do human patient share very large quantity of SARS-CoV-2 in their feces. And the number of um, viruses um, RNA detected in the feces are up to um, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7 per gram of feces. And then there was also research in the early on of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic showing that um, you can recover the viral uh, genomic information from um, um, a patient room from the toilet, from the from the railings, um, everywhere, and including the toilet um, um, air in the room of the air. So this is the primary driver for the research that we are carrying out to understand: Are there any risk if you share a toilet uh, bathroom with the with the say? sweet mate who, or a family member who have a COVID infection. So we set up two scenarios to look at this potential risk. If you see the schematic, the first scenario we're looking at, this is the infected patient who is using the toilet. And then after flashing the toilet, generate certain um, amount of aerosols. The aerosol may contain the genetic material of SARS-CoV-2. And then you have second, the healthy uh, sweet mate who also using the toilet maybe 30 minutes after. And would there be a risk for infection? Are the aerosols containing the remains of um, the viral uh, genome will be uh, potentially infectious to the second patient, uh, the second uh, resident in the same suite. So that's the scenario one. The so scenario two is that in all those um, multi-unit buildings, our sanitation uh, the system is basically connected, connected through this called this called a drain pipe. The drain pipe when you flush and the toilet, it generate, it goes through the drain pipe and then traveled by gravity, but generate aerosols, but also there's also attachment to the wall of the drain pipe. Are those aerosols potentially con uh, contain viruses um, entering into another apartment, which is, can be far away from the first apartment, um, but you could have a faulty drain. There is normally a seal of the water seal to block this aerosol to enter into your bathroom. But I'm pretty sure many of you have experienced those uh, toilet drain smell. If you go into an older apartment building or older hotel, it smells like the, the sewer drain smell. Actually, that is basically this water seal here is faulty. We call it faulty 
uh, drain scenario. In the faulty drain scenario, the aerosol from this vertical pipe can enter to your bathroom, in your restroom, in your, in your household. And this is the scenario being uh, used to analyze the Hong Kong first SARS case in, uh, um, during the first outbreak. Um, to analyze the risk of the two scenario, we first need to um, uh, collect the data. The data is basically about the concentration of the viruses in the human feces. And then uh, we collect those data um, from all the clinical report and then looking at the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 load in the feces. And so you bin those numbers, those are called the probability distribution. Those are the concentrations of the SARS-CoV-2 um, in the feces. Of course, the, the concentration go all over the place. What you can do is to build, it's called a cumulated, cumulative probability function. So basically you want to understand under this curve, what is a likely concentration that can be in, uh, with the uh, toilet water in, um, in those feces. If you calculate the volume of the feces and corrected them with the volume of the flashing water. So that's the second step of this model analysis. The framework of this quantitative microbial risk assessment actually is a classical um, National Academy of Science framework. And basically it involves four steps, is hazard identification, exposure assessment, dose response, and the risk characterization. So in their hazard in here, no, uh, no problem. We're looking at the hazard of, um, uh, of SARS-CoV-2 in the wastewater that coming in from the toilet flushing and exposure assessment involved, how do you um, expose to those um, potential hazard? If you can enter the toilet room, basically you're breathing in the air, um, um, potentially contain those aerosol, which is contaminated by the SARS-CoV-2. That is basically exposure assessment that determined by how long you stay in the toilet room and then what is the concentration of the viruses in that aerosol. And then how much aerosol is generated after each toilet flushing. And the next step is a dose response. Dose response is basically expression of how many um, number of viruses enter your lung can trigger a disease response. And so there is no um, detailed dose response for the SARS-CoV-2, but there are um, animal models have been um, conducted for the, the first SARS. And so based on the concentration of the dose admitted to uh, uh, um, a mouse model, and then they can de develop a response. And that response is fitted into a mathematical model. And then that is called the probability of infection is the function of the dose and other model parameters. Those mo model parameters, it's just through a mathematical fitting of the, of the dose response curve. So, and then of course, risk characterization is combining those um, exposure and dose into um, the final outcome of disease. So this is a basically an inhalation exposure model. Inhalation exposure model is expression of the dose of the viruses that may enter into your lung is determined by the concentration of the viruses in the flashing water. And then the aerosol generated in, uh, from the toilet flushing. And how do you breathe? Some people is a oral breather, the other is nasal breather, and then depends on, are you excited? If you're excited, you're, you're, um, the air cycles you breathe in are very different. So, so those are published by the um, by um, US EPA um, according to a truly study of human breathing patterns. And the duration in the toilet room, again, is a very important factor to 
come together and then you can determine the total dose of exposure. The dose response curve you are seeing here, that is the pathogen dose, that's the infectious risk. This dose response model is developed based on the SARS-CoV-1, the first and SARS in there. And then you fit this mathematical function, you uh, can generate exposure function. This function is best fitted by exponential function. So this is the dose, and then the R is the best fit factor from the response model. Putting all those together, basically what we also need is basically the dose here. The dose here is one of the most um, um, sort of a tricky uh, research in this area because report of the fecal loading in patients um, depends on which research paper you're looking at, how many patients, what phase of the patient is. Um, so in the towards the end of um, the patient's um, uh, recovery, actually they're show, showing very high load of the SARS-CoV-2 viruses in their feces. And then so what you can do is basically collect those data and fit them into a probability distribution. So this in the X axis here is a dose per exposure event. I have several data sets and then being used to fit this distribution function. And then so if you use one set of the data, you'll get a curve look like this. And then I also have a worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is collected in a hospital bathroom um, during the peak of pandemic in the city of Wuhan. So this concentration in the aerosol here is the really high concentration, but um, you can see the, um, the probability is high, the concentration is high. The last bar graph uh, you're seeing here is a back calculation of the dose from the scenario in the Hong Kong uh, first SARS outbreak. So those are pretty high um, number in here. So those are different data. This is the data from the toilet flushing scenario. Basically, you're sharing a same bathroom with the suite mate who is a um, COVID patient. And this is the faulty drain scenario that you are living downstairs of a COVID family, COVID uh, uh, infected family. Look at the differences in the probability density uh, in the Y scale here. And so the faulty dream scenario has a lower um, probability and uh, has a lower uh, um, dose per exposure event. So putting all those four pieces together, this is the basic the risk of infection in the two different scenarios. The data, the outcome here is a little bit uh, challenge to, to look, um, to understand here. The first, um, the top you're looking at here is two different scenario. That's the scenario one, if you're sharing a same bathroom. Scenario B is you're in a different apartment building, uh, in a different apartment completely with the patient. And then the, the Y axis here is a locked in illness risk. And how do you read this 10 to the minus three is basically uh, one of the 1,000 chance you have a risk of infected by COVID-19. Um, so the different colored box plot here is basically a different data set. And this is all about SARS-CoV-2 in here. The worst case scenario, even in the worst case scenario of those data collected from the bathroom aerosol in, um, in Wuhan, and then use the risk you are exposed to is 10 to the minus six. So one in a um, 100,000 chance is uh, you can get infection that's a medium value. And in normal scenario, in the regular scenario, one chance of exposure is one it's 10 to the minus 10, it's extremely low. So if you don't know the EPA, normal acceptable, acceptable risk is 10 to the minus four is right here. And then so Sunny, this result shows... Sunny, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanna make sure that there's enough time left in today's presentation for our other yeah. speakers. Do you think um, we could transition to our next 
presentation or you have a couple more slides? I, I'm pretty much done. And okay. then this is okay. my summary. Great. Thank um, you. So the summary is basically say you don't need to worry so much about this potential risk. And then uh, um, the only, you know, uh, problem is you need to get more data to have a, a better understanding of the, um, the load of the viruses. So I'm going to wrap up with that. Thank all the funding agency and then the team and you guys. Thank you so That's much, Levy. I, I We really appreciate your um, sharing your research with us. And I know there's lots of questions in the chat. So we're really excited to get to those when we're done with everyone else's presentation.